so how, how much uh, research have you uh, be, been able to do in regards to what you mentioned here uh, la uh, last uh, in, in terms of uh, the effect uh, potentially then on the, on the quantum field, if we can call it that, by, by the heart? Well, we're beginning that research now, and then some research, other researchers as well are interested in this, and so we have a great group of scientists that are working on these things. Um, I think the, the main way we're doing it now is through the Global Coherence Initiative, which is a part of, our, of the Institute of Heart Math, which is a science-based initiative uh, designed really to unite many thousands of people all around the world um, to learn how to, to, to improve their own what we call heart coherence. And I know I'm changing concepts a lot here, so listeners, please bear with me. But improve the level of, of heart-brain interaction within the individuals. Then join that power collectively within the membership of the Global Coherence Initiative. And then begin to do experiments looking at changes that may be occurring in the Earth's fields. Because, see, the Earth produces fields itself, a geomagnetic field and a field called the ionosphere. And so ultimately, we're looking at changes in mass human emotion and how they may be detectable in the Earth's geomagnetic and ionospheric fields. Hmm. And so this is a beginning stage of showing that really mass human emotion may be having a measurable impact on the Earth itself. And we can talk more about that as the show goes on, but that's a, a little introduction into how are we beginning to look at the power of emotion, the power of the heart, and its interaction with the Earth itself? Mm, that is very interesting. I, I think I want to ask you a little bit later more about potential and uh, effects of this, so to speak. But if we uh, talk a little bit more primarily about the heart and so forth here and what you mentioned, uh, do, do you think that this could be connected with the uh, 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 Kirlian photography, for instance, in, in terms of uh, measuring the aura? That we, we have different visual representations of this. Do you think we're talking about the same thing here, or is it is this something different in, in terms of the heart? Well, I think, you know, I don't know a tremendous amount about Kirlian photography, but I think that there's new science coming in. I think Kirlian photography would be a step towards the kind of science that we're going to see in the future. Um, we're going to see new science emerge over time that's going to prove out things that we've been wondering about for a really long time and have had belief in for a very long time. Uh, in our case, looking at the, the power of heart focus, care, and intention, is a way of, of maybe looking at uh, improving scientifically that things like our prayers do count. The meditations that people do really do have an effect. Intuitively, we know this already, and maybe we don't need science to prove it. But when we have science to prove something, it makes it more real. It makes it more tangible. And when it becomes more real, its power increases. The power of belief increases when we have proof that the belief makes a difference. So curium photography, other sciences that are out there, Many great things going on, many progressive things going on in the world of science uh, to begin to prove out some of these things that we've believed for thousands of years. Very interesting. Do you think that uh, intuition and, uh, and uh, other kind of more um, elusive um, subjects, so to speak, could be connected with this as well, the heart? Yes, definitely. Now, there's one study that we've done. It was a study uh, published in the Journal of Alternative and Complementary Medicine. And it was a study looking at what we thought at the time was the precognitive response. Basically, we had test subjects sitting in front of a computer, uh, with, and the computer was loaded with images, some of which were pleasant, some were very horrific. And the computer was randomly selecting those images. A person sitting in front of the computer would press a button. There'd be a delay, an indeterminate amount of time and delay, and then a picture would emerge. And we had the test subjects uh, look, wired up from head to toe. We were looking at brainwave activity. We were looking at changes in the heart. We were looking at changes in skin temperature. A variety of things were being measured simultaneously. When the researchers analyzed the data, they were shocked to see some, some things that they hadn't expected. They saw that in many cases, up to six seconds prior to the time the picture actually came on the screen, that the body responded as if the picture was already there. Hmm. It's the physiological response to the upcoming picture actually began to occur six seconds before it actually showed up on the screen. When they analyzed the data uh, more thoroughly and really dug in, and this was a very complicated and expensive scientific experiment, when they analyzed the data further, they found out that the first part of our physiology to respond before the picture was actually there was the heart about six seconds out. 
about a second and a half later, the brain began to respond. And then a second and a half before the picture actually emerged on the screen, the heart and the brain synchronized. But it was the heart that was the first responder. Now, that's amazing to me. So it found out that it really wasn't precognitive because it was not the brain that was responding first. It was the heart. And so what I draw from that, and it's something that I've believed in myself for a long time, is that the heart is really the entry point in our system where spirit, and I'll use spirit as a generic term for something larger than our normal selves, but it's through the heart where spirit actually merges with our day-to-day lives, with our physical consciousness. And it comes in through the heart level. Now, I've experienced this many, many times, and I've believed it for a long time. The experiment that I just mentioned is a step towards showing that that may, in fact, be the case, that the intuitive response happens through the heart, not just through the brain. Heart and brain work together. They're a powerful combination, but brain function actually is critically dependent upon signals from the heart, so it requires both heart and brain for us to really experience something like intuition, and I believe that the heart plays a key role in all of this. Uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about, uh, I guess, emotional well-being and also emotional stability and how, th- how you think that this is uh, connected uh, to the heart. Well, I'm glad you asked about that because this is the practical reason for heart math and for heart-based living and for even doing the scientific research. You see, we, we have this great gift. It's the ability to feel. We can feel a myriad of emotions. We can feel more emotional textures than any other living thing on this planet. And that's a great, great gift. It turns life from being just a dry, objective experience into a living, visceral, tangible, beautiful experience. But yet emotion is something we haven't learned how to utilize properly. It still is the enemy. People still fear emotion. Emotional responses to all the different things that happen in life take us up and down and all around from joy one minute to sadness the next and a lot of different things in between and it's really through a lack of being able to regulate emotions that we experience some of the the things in life that we really don't want to experience and in these changing times there's so much coming at us so many new things so many new challenges so much information it's bombarding us in our emotional uh, maturity can't keep up with it we haven't developed the ability yet to utilize our emotions in a way that allow us to ride these waves of change gracefully. Instead, they're they're beating people around. People are not doing well overall with the speed of change. And you see that so easily when you look across society at all the problems that people are having. So I say that with great compassion. It is through developing the intelligence of the heart that we gain a greater ability to better regulate our emotions. And that does not mean repress emotion. It means to better, to make better emotional choices, to learn how to have emotional reactions, but then to make choices that bring us back to where we want to be more quickly. It allows us to experience emotions I mentioned earlier, like care and compassion and love and appreciation, more easily. And when we are able to do that, and we're able to take the emotional energy that we have and direct it in ways that are positive and productive, that's when we begin to experience a more fulfilling life. It affects everything from our health to our relationships to our performance. And so the most practical approach to heart, uh, application of heart intelligence is learning to use it to better regulate our emotions. That's how we grow uh, spiritually and in many other ways, I think, right now especially, is by learning how to better uh, use our emotional gift. Uh, one question that comes up in connection with this, uh, and you alluded to this a little bit as well, uh, is basically if you think that people are are escaping from their emotions at this time, and and uh, because we can see this in terms of uh, how medication is being applied and and the different, uh, if you will, hormonal, uh, you know, balancing uh, things that people take in order to maybe o- not only suppress but also keep it in, in, in more balanced and. The question then uh, that, that comes up there is, is how can emotions then be, be a choice? Because this is something that for most people just happen, if you, if you know what I mean, uh, Howard. Well, it's an interesting comment, Heinrich, because that same statement was made to me a number of years ago when I was being interviewed for uh, ABC World News Tonight. After the interview, the, the interviewer came up to me and said, 
that was an amazing statement you just made. I never thought of emotion as a choice. I always thought there was something that happened to me. Mm. Now, in the new days, in the new times that we're moving into, the new consciousness, we begin to see that differently. Yes, we will have emotional reactions. Very often, emotion does happen to us from the perceptions of life that we have. But we also have a much greater ability to choose the emotions that we want. 